And then he's going to shoot himself. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And he gets interrupted by a deer. Like, (laughs) by a deer that needs the space next. I want him to be like, oh, I'm in here from 4 to 4.30. And the deer's like, it's it's, it's 4.28. Yeah, till 4.30. (laughs) I wanted the deer to be like, ooh, awkward. Sorry. (laughs) Just slowly back out. The deer introduces himself. Hi, new to the neighborhood. We brought an edible arrangement. (laughs) God awful movie. 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 Welcome back to the Gamcast, where each week we sample another selection from Christian cinema so that summer blockbusters won't be the worst things we see in theaters this year. I'm your host, Noah Illusions, and sitting to my immediate left is my good friend, Heath Enright. Heath, welcome back. Thanks, Noah. You know who sounds like Christian Bale with food in his mouth? <laughs> Sam Worthington, <laughs> the main character in this Holy movie. Shit. And sitting 81 miles to my right is my bad friend, Eli Bosnick. Eli, how are you this fine afternoon, sir? Fuck this movie. Oh my. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Oh. So might as well get it over with. Heath, tell us, what will we be breaking down today? All right. We watched The Shack. For you people. For you, at, we watched this theater. movie. And uh, it's a movie that finally answers the question, can't we all just get along with serial pedophile murder rapists? <laughs> now, I won't spoil it, but it's either yes or no. They do answer it. They do answer it. The answer is because of Jesus. I won't say yes or no, but it's because of Jesus. <laughs> and Eli, how bad was this movie? Oh, well, if you call yourself a Christian, but the only part of the Bible you've read is the title, you <laughs> will love this movie. This This was the movie version of every infuriating conversation I've ever had with a quote unquote Christian while they wear a healing crystal and have Arabic words tattooed on their body. Uh, It was uh, (laughs) it was exactly that, though. It was the fuzzy woo Christian film. Oh, my God. All right. So let's be honest, because we're talking about a flick with known actors and a twenty million dollar budget being dropped at the start of the summer oh, movie season. It was twenty million dollars. Yes, yes. Oh, uh, yeah, made sixteen million of it back on opening weekend. God so damn hopefully it. there won't be a The Shack too. Okay, but look, this flick had Oscar winner Octavia Spencer, Oscar nominee Graham Greene, and iHeartRadio Music Award Best Country Single co nominee Tim McGraw in it. So. I, I, <laughs> I, Wait, what? I, yeah, that's real. I, I, I feel like the more re- that's the top thing on his IMDb awards thing too. But I, I feel like the more relevant question here is is not how bad was this movie, but like how much worse than you expected it to be was this movie? Because I was afraid we might be going into something that was moderately good. Yeah. Yeah, well, we here's the thing. We saw this preview and we were like, all right, well, she's good and he's good. And I like iHeartRadio as well. So like, let's skip this one. And then everyone was like, no, do the shack. You have to do the shack. And we were like, all right, let's do the shack, right? Worst case scenario, Noah and Heath drive five hours to the nearest movie theater and they pay in pennies. And then they fucking, we watch the movie. But this was so much worse. It was so, so bad. Much worse. I just expected a fried green tomatoes, feel good, Christian means be nice to everybody movie. But it is not that. It was it bizarre. Not. Holy shit. Okay, so is there anything you guys want to nominate this one for being the best at being the worst at? Uh, yes. Best worst magical black lady. It, she shows up like five seconds into the movie <laughs> right? and she's the best worst. The actress is way too good for this movie. Oh, she's the uh, best, but the oh, worst. Okay, look, Sam Worthington was too good for this movie and he's <laughs> fucking yeah. awful. Not a great sign. <laughs> yeah. Can I go with best worst Wooey Christians not staying in their fucking lane. <laughs> Here's the thing. I didn't, look, I don't hate a wooey Christian. We all know the wooey just like Jesus to me means the love. And you're like, I wish you'd just cut out that word right there <laughs> at the front. But like, okay, yeah, go ahead. Sure. You're a you, you light a candle. Sure. Whatever. Live your life. But you stay out of the rape. You have to, if you're going to do the wooey thing, you never get to think about rape. Because right? the atheists are the wooey Christians who thought about rape. We're just the wooey whatever we were who were like, yeah, but what about rape? And now we're here. That's, you got to stay in your lane. Hells yes. Well said, <laughs> That's going to be on my gravestone. Wooey Christian who thought about rape. <laughs> 
See, now mine is going to be so disappointing after that diatribe. I, I'm, I was just going to go with best worst CGI for something that would have been cheaper to actually do. There are more than one instances in this film. I'm, I'm thinking of one in particular. We, Where it's like, we'll you know, they we'll made that look it. realistic in the 50s, y'all. <laughs> wow. All right. Well, if Heath and I can suffer through the haunted bridge between us and the theater for this movie, the least you can do is wait through this interstitial. So we're going to pause for a quick break. And when we come back, we'll break down all the try not to think about this too hard apologetics of The Shack. Hey there. Are you a wooey Christian? Is your version of Jesus just a super nice Middle Eastern guy who says nice things? Then ask your doctor about Hemet Meta. That's right. If you suffer from delusions about what a Palestinian radical rabbi said, did, and meant, Hemet Meta might be right for you. Like Jesus, Hemet was also a teacher and then started a kind of cult thing, except Hemet, to our knowledge, has never yelled at an olive tree. And if he has, he's very sorry. And hey, does Jesus have a blog? Hemet Meta has a blog. Take that, Jesus. Don't want a brown guy? How about Seth Andrews? Same thing, plus milk chocolate voice. We like that guy. Because we know the A word isn't for everybody. Ooh, scary. But if what you're looking for in a dude is brown skin and good ideas, then try Hemet Meta instead. He does not know we did this. I, I bet he will, though. <laughs> Hey, folks, sorry to bother you, but we've got a very important announcement. We know that you've probably been asked to do this before, but our advertisers have created a little survey at podcast.study for you to take. We can't stress enough that this is how our advertisers gauge both the size and responsiveness of our audience. So if ever there was a time for us to ask you a favor, now's that time. If even a tenth of the people listening to this show took the survey, we could double or even triple our advertising revenue, which would allow for more live shows, more conventions, and even more cool stuff we want to share with you. So pretty pleased with Sugar on Top. Go to podcast.study, that's podcast.study, select all of our shows that you listen to, both Scathing Atheist and God Awful Movies are listed, and fill out the survey. It takes less than five minutes, it's totally anonymous, but you'll be helping the show out in a major way. Now, we know that a simple ask isn't enough to get you all fired up, so we also wrote you this sexy survey anthem to get you pumped. So, Eli, take it away. a favor and we know it's one you've had to do before for other shows but this is how podcasts sell ads if you all take this survey even though you don't want to big companies will pay our show amounts you can afford to please take our survey it only takes a bit and if you do it now, I won't fuck up your shit. I'm sorry I said that. This is just important to me. And if you don't do it, I'll fucking break your knees. Now we know that there are other shows that have asked you all to do this. But they didn't write this song for you And one of their hosts isn't Jewish You can go to podcast at study And take one for the team Or you can ignore this song And be super fucking mean Please take our survey It takes a minute or two And if you do it now Keith will make love to you just take the survey You could already be done And we will use that money To make the show more fun We'll do live chores And we'll come to more cons We'll make some more t-shirts I'll try to make YouTube work I fucking hate YouTube Like I get that it has good fun but honestly, it seems to me 90% bloody shit farts Sorry, back to the survey Podcast.study You could get us some bands We're begging on our knees Please take the survey Survey, 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 survey Take the survey Take it, take the 
survey It only takes five minutes It's anonymous if you're one of those weirdos Who's like, oh, they're taking my information It's not that survey Take the survey Did, did you please, please, Did you promise everyone I would fuck them If they took the survey? Is that what I just heard? Podcast.study Okay, I mean, I will I just, you know Ask me ahead and we're back for the breakdown, and we're going to start off with a VO from a person admitting that you would have to be an idiot to believe this movie. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's fantastic. It's like, this movie's about a man who spends a weekend in the woods with God, but hear me out. Hear me <laughs> out. <Right? laughs> might as well, opening line, might as well be, uh, y'all ain't gonna believe this here shit. <laughs> I, feel like, I feel like half the test audience was like, bullshit, no, no. <laughs> well, then they yeah. added that line, okay, wait, wait, let's hear him out. Let's hear him out. <laughs> Just a bunch of people half lowering themselves back into their seats. Right. <laughs> All right. All right. <laughs> So yeah, so we start off back in the days of sepia when Mac was just a young boy. Yeah, and despite the fact that this movie will take <laughs> place in younger times, he appears to have been born and raised in the 1940s? <laughs> or 20s or something, yeah. Uh-huh. Yeah, and his da- dad was a mom-beating kid hitter. Uh, so we get a little bit of that. And, and and since we're almost a full minute into this movie at this point, it's time to meet our magical black lady. <laughs> yeah. It's so good. She might as well fly in during the preview, like over our heads in the movie theater. And like <laughs> into the screen before it even starts. So stupid. Yeah, and she, she offers him a pie that she has just taken out of the oven to really just hitting all those stereotypes in the first 30 seconds of meeting her. Yeah. Uh-huh. She sits him down and she says... Parents aren't supposed to hurt children in a movie about how God hurts his children. <laughs> she, the lady who will later be God is like, parents aren't supposed to hurt their children. They're supposed to know better than that later in this movie. I am not at fault for hurting <laughs> my children. Uh, right. Yeah, exactly. Also, and her advice, because she sees that he's got the black eyes. She's like, oh, your dad did this, didn't you? And he's like, mm-hmm. And, and she says, well, I've got an idea. Why don't you talk to God? Not, here's the number for Child Protective <laughs> Services. She's like, have you prayed about it? That works. And it doesn't, by the way, because then the very next scene, we get him confessing to his pastor, but his dad figures it out from the evil look the pastor gives dad. The pastor's obviously like, did you try swallowing a fly? I don't know why you swallowed a fly. No one will help this child. Help this child. There are systems in place. Uh, well, right, exactly. Shame there's not a government place where he could have done that anonymously a little bit more, huh? Yeah. But they, if yeah. I pretend that Child Protective Services isn't listening, will you go to them? <laughs> Um, it, yeah, but dad figures it out. So then we get him getting like beaten in the rain. And and the dad's yelling like, say the Bible verse about why I'm allowed to beat you right now. Yeah, right. Like, don't bring, this movie is not good at bringing up things that make Christianity look good. They do, It gets right. worse from here. Way worse, in fact. It, it, it does. But I feel like that was what they thought they were doing with this movie is saying, like, here's people using religion wrong. Later, we'll show you people using religion well, you right. Would, you would need to do it right then. <laughs> Afterwards, <laughs> well, you'll see. That's they where don't. it all falls apart. Yeah. They just do it wrong worse. Don't use the words of, because that is in the, the dad, let's just be clear, the dad is right. Right? Yep. According to the, the the way to be wrong is to be like, oh, this is a bad book of rules and morals. <laughs> oh, look at this, a comic book. I'm going to use this from now on. <laughs> Wolverine <laughs> never hits his kids. Great. Here we go. X Men Forty One, the new book. <laughs> <laughs> So, yeah, so the VO uh, tells us about how the beating lasted well into the night. And then the movie takes a dark turn when little Mac decides to take matters into his own hands by killing his dad. Good for him. With rat poison. Yeah. Him and Charlize Theron. Yeah, eat your heart out, <laughs> suicidal black kid in the alley. This is how you open a movie. <laughs> So, okay, so that, then he wakes up in the modern day. Like, we, we get the, it, it, this movie doesn't ever give you the payoff. We get him pouring poison into his dad's beer. We don't get to watch dad slowly die of strychnine poisoning. But anyway, so now he make, wakes up in the modern day. And I just wrote in my notes, you guys remember when Sam Worthington was going to be famous? Like, when he was going to be a movie <laughs> star? Oh, poor guy. But but you really see several times in this movie why that never really happened He's for gonna him. He's going to start looking like Kevin Sorbo soon. <laughs> right. Wait. 
<laughs> well, I, to be fair, I think the way he got away with murder of crushing up that bottle and hiding the pieces in his mouth for the rest of his life while doing <laughs> my Mark Wahlberg impersonation <laughs> is pretty clever. <laughs> All right, good so, little talk. Let's, let's little start talk. that conversation early. Okay. So <laughs> Sam Worthington, Australian actor that he is, is trying to do a American Midwestern Boston is Northwestern. I, it's, yeah. Australian. It's, not clear. I, it's communist. I it, he is <laughs> so bad with his fucking accent especially when he has to get emotional because he does bad no matter what but there's a couple times in this movie where he has to kind of cry and talk and oh my <laughs> god it's like he gives it's it's like watching uh, uh kevin costner do robin hood little pieces of peanut butter <laughs> flying out of his mouth while he's trying it's not attractive right. the girl scout cookies got there just before every single <laughs> try of this movie <laughs> Oh no, fuck you. If I wait, it, the, the thin mints will be gone. <laughs> Are you a little doll? <laughs> Absolute. I refuse Deep this cut. accent. Deep this cut. is a $20 million movie. <laughs> right. We couldn't spend the hundred bucks to pay a teenager to go, that don't sound like an American yet. <laughs> So yeah, so he gets up and uh, the family is running late for church. How many times have we seen this fucking scene? And like every time I think we've ever seen this scene, the youngest child just destroys Christian theology with a simple question. It's the best. That happens so much so in these good. movies. She's like, all right, well, if, if God doesn't want us to be late for church, then why are we late for church? <laughs> no, you're, you're, you're being a bitch. Good. I'm so glad you're going to get murder raped in a second. <laughs> I, was, I thought he was about to like take her out back and whip her there. <laughs> like, wait, is, hold on, it's not raining. It feels like it. Should, it was raining when I was. <laughs> we're gonna wait for it to rain, then I'm gonna whip you. Yeah, Don't. kids have it so easy these days. You're gonna go in dry. <laughs> I'm gonna go hide all the strychnine I keep in my office. <laughs> So we head off to church so we can get our third church scene in the first five minutes of this movie. And all I wrote here was like, man, the lyricists just aren't even trying. Like we open up on everybody singing, holy, holy, holy is God, God, God. Right. But Jesus. he doesn't believe enough in God. So he somehow can't keep up with that lyrical complexity. He's like, <laughs> something, something, something is who? Wait, sorry. Ah, Chet. <laughs> Also, this is really fucking weird, and I barely caught it when it happened, but it, the the voiceover, who is not, I don't even know if he's a character in this movie, but the voiceover um, tells us that, you know, Sam Worthington, oh, he's pretty bummed, and he's, uh, like, pretty half-assed about his Christianity, but his wife has a great relationship with God and calls him Papa. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> nice try. Look, weird. I'm sure one day he <laughs> saw Papa in her phone, and he was like, hey, what's... What's this? Your dad doesn't have a cell phone. And she was like, oh, that's what I call God. And he was like, sure. sure. Yeah. Why did you I, say Papa when I was fucking? You know what? My way of saying God, give me the cigarette. Yeah. You don't You don't smoke. You don't. It's for Fred. <laughs> it's crazy because I dialed the number and this Latino guy picked up. <laughs> Why's God got to be white? You're right. No, that's he was. <laughs> the setup is so stupid. It's they're they're going for dramatic, but it's not dramatic. They're trying to sell it like an action trailer, like in a world where Dad is lukewarm about religion. One man, <laughs> Sam Worthington, is Lucas Warm. Like it's so stupid. <laughs> oh. Yeah, so we cut to him. He's on the phone. He's looking out of his window. And he's like, no, honey, you and the kids stay elsewhere. I'll be here all by myself. It's too snowy for you to come home today, which is kind of a, like a, a bullshitty setup. But when you realize that it's not setting anything up, you, you really start to understand what we're in for in this movie. And this is where we learn that since his daughter died, he's been struck with Batman voice. <laughs> so the way this actor chose to play grieving was this. Yes. Uh, yeah. Yes. Uh -huh. Maybe. Uh, maybe that's what I'm Americans not wearing sound. Hockey pads. <laughs> well, oh, maybe he learned pads. his American accent from Batman movies. Maybe that was his only exposure to the American accent. Mm. Could be that. <laughs> Give him the benefit of the doubt. All right. So yeah. So he's plowing his driveway. Uh, with a snow plow when it runs out of gas. Fuck you. Get a shovel. Right? Whatever. <laughs> you know, melt it with a blowtorch. Fuck off. 
All of us have some form of, ooh, nice plow. That's <laughs> <laughs> how you can tell your hosts are aging when we, we stop commenting on the women in the movies and start being like, oh, that looks like an X. Is that John Deere? <laughs> I, think it's an, I think it's an XJ47. It'd be so yeah. much easier. Yeah. We used to use a shovel and we liked it. <laughs> yes. Used to. I got to. Anyway, yeah. So, yeah. So he goes over to his neighbor's place to get uh, some gas. And we, we need this scene because we want to see that, like, the neighbor wants to crack his shell of depression, but Mac just won't let him in. <laughs> Very awkward. And his way of showing that is he goes like, you want to come over for some dinner? And he's like, no, nah, I'm, I'm grieving for my dead child. And he's like, oh. Being kind of negative, Nancy, about this whole <laughs> dead kid thing. And it's been months, right? Like, this is a man whose daughter was murdered months ago, and the movie right. narrative is like, come on. Where are my kids? So he's walking back from his neighbor's place, and he looks at his mailbox, and there's a letter in the mail. In this weather, impossible. Yeah, you up, <laughs> God. Yeah, it's <laughs> basically it. It actually says like, "Hey, you remember that time your daughter got murder raped?" Kind of feel like I should explain. Holla back, God. Like, that's <laughs> yeah, right. Yes, but please come meet me where your daughter was murder raped. <laughs> yep. Of all the yeah, right. Um, and he's so surprised by and it's signed Papa. By the way, that's that's important because that's what his wife calls God. Anyway, so he falls down. And and there's a white out. I wanted so badly when he like looked around for the black lady to just be sneaking away. Just like, oh fucking I should have used a miracle. <laughs> <laughs> I'll see you at the cabin. I thought I know I could Batman just... <laughs> gets this shit down pat, but she dives uh... behind a bush. No, I saw you. I saw you. <laughs> no, you didn't. <laughs> I'm a robber. <laughs> and so and and now we're we're, we're going to flashback. Now I'm going to tell you that. I'm going to do you that favor. Right? We've already told you that the daughter gets uh, killed. We've already kind of given you an idea where the chronology of this movie is going. The movie doesn't give you shit. So we cut to earlier or later, but I'm just going to go ahead and tell you <laughs> this is earlier. <laughs> It's not clear at all. And and the family is all go because we've done this twice now. It wasn't winter when they went to church. What the anyway. So, yeah, the, the family's all going camping except mom. She can't get out of her seminar. Right. And mom could not be more speaking in exposition. She's like, you guys are going to have a great time and nobody's going to fuck your sister to death. It's going to be fantastic. <laughs> We're all going to live forever. Have fun. Well, well, right, they even the snap the we're all going to live forever picture quick before they leave. Yeah. Quick, while well, we're happy the and neighbor. unmarred by tragedy, guys. The neighbor actually comes over. He's like, you guys want a picture with none of you dead? Can you jinx that? <laughs> nah, 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 we're going to do a picture. Say nothing but consensual. <laughs> nothing but consensual. Jeez. Say we're never going to die. <laughs> so, so they're heading to camp. But first, they this scene is so fucking weird. Okay, so, <laughs> I forgot about. Oh, I love this so much. <laughs> it's so fucking weird. So they're heading out to the summer camp, but first they pass the waterfall, and the older two kids really want to stop, and they're like, "Dad, can we stop?" He's like, "No, we can't stop." Like, but you have to tell the little daughter about the story of the Indian princess, which you can't do while driving in a car. <laughs> we must stop. So, so they stop at the waterfall. So he can tell his story. Would anyone like to sum up the story here? <laughs> ooh, ooh, ooh. Eli. Yeah. Once upon a time, <laughs> there was a beautiful Indian princess. They tell the story at Yale every year on Halloween, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> and her father, the great chief Ugwug, knew that the great spirit was cursing all of the tribe. And they would only stop... If the girl killed herself, so she did, <laughs> and then the great spirit made a waterfall. The end. Yeah, the story is, <laughs> once upon a time, a girl about your age killed herself jumping off a cliff. Do you understand the lesson, six-year-old? you get it? <laughs> this is our family pastime story. Yeah. What? Yes. Oh. Like, that's such a weird, like, the family sing along at dinner, like, time for Noble Samurai song. <laughs> <laughs> no, Robin Williams song. Oh, Robin God. Williams song. Robin Williams song. 
Jesus. <laughs> uh, also, I should point out, he tells this song, he switches accents again here, yes. and he tells this song exactly as Carl the Pug of Pegacorn. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. He's <laughs> like, hey, it's me, Carl the Pug of Pegacorn. Kill yourself to save your tribe. <laughs> Yeah, so. Definitely wasn't Tony D. <laughs> no, no, nothing no, totally at all. Different like person. Maybe it was just a tour of the United <laughs> States that we were getting from Worthington. I don't know. <laughs> so, so finally they get to the camp, and I love they, like he basically steps out of the the truck, and someone walks up and says, "Hello, main character. I'm your poorly developed friend for later." <laughs> right. That's me. Yeah, and so far, I should point out, on this character's journey, he has just met a series of rugged, handsome men who want to <laughs> yeah. help him and be his friend. It would be a great gay porn, <laughs> I'm just saying. Absolutely. Never pays off. <laughs> Everyone in this movie, they're like, all models for lumberjack shirts. It's <laughs> the budget for CGI beards is enormous and yeah. well spent. They are beautiful men. <laughs> oh, I want one of those. <laughs> so, so then we get both families like joining up for a Brady Bunch sing along, not about the noble samurai. And I guess th this is so that like we can see them all hanging out later. All the the parents hanging out later. Uh, when the little girl comes and says, "Daddy, we have to say prayers to Papa," so we can explain the Papa thing. Oh, and it's so good because you get to see full grown adults react to that behavior. <laughs> He's like, oh, yeah, my my wife calls God Papa. And they're like, that is uh, weird. Is she yeah. special? Is your wife special? Did she no, make her own jewelry? No. God damn it. Tell Did me you about have to it. get married in Louisiana? <laughs> <laughs> she just worships Mexican potatoes, y'all. It's not as weird as you think. But Vicky, Vicky likes it. Uh, so so anyway, so he goes to pray with his daughter uh, where they will now reenact the what are the stars scene from Lion King. Oh, my God. <laughs> so this movie, <laughs> above everything, this movie is nauseating. My yes. mom used to tell me a star twinkle is a prayer heard in heaven. Meep, me, meep, me. How much cutesy, <laughs> bootsy, Moana reject stuff that hit the cutting room floor can we shove into this movie to make up for our rape apologies? <laughs> <laughs> Every time you smile, God farts an angel. <laughs> this movie's about a rape. This movie's about a rape and murder of a child. <laughs> But they call God Papa, and that's cute or something. I wanted God to start talking back to him, like, "Papa's my father." Wait, I don't, I don't have. Call me, <laughs> yeah. call me infinite regress problem. <laughs> call right. call yes. me Mister God. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, so the now, but the little girl is still fucked up over the suicidal princess story for some reason. Damn six no year old can't way. shake it off. She goes, "Is it a true story?" And he goes, well, sometimes legends are based on true stories. And the other daughter screams from off camera. <laughs> Jesus isn't a legend, though. <laughs> and that's so how good. Heath reacted in the theater when that <laughs> happened right there. It's me and Heath sitting in the back and like 26 <laughs> old ladies who are apparently all together. They just came from bridge or whatever. And uh, and Heath did that. And I'm like, oh, God, we're not going to make it through. Oh, it was so good. And we should point out that it is so clearly like ADR, like, ah, Jesus, no, not him. Yeah, so that's <laughs> not what we're talking about, y'all. Again, the test audiences were like, what are you trying to say? Yeah. <laughs> Fix um, and, it. Fix and this it. is where the, the, the six-year-old girl once again destroys their theology by saying, hey, why was God such a dick, Dad? Yeah, right. Let's explore this. Seems like God's bad. Yeah, we're going to have to kill you off and then explain it. That's going to be the movie. We'll do the rest about that. Yeah. Yeah. Right. And she says, will I ever have to jump off a cliff? And he's like, no. I mean, well, maybe if God told you to, you absolutely <laughs> should. I feel like if we want to abandon this idea, we shouldn't be going down this path. There are, <laughs> I just want to point out, there are viewpoints where one doesn't have to obfuscate the answers to these questions. <laughs> Cliff, though, I think we could do better than Cliff. That's like a boring death for a six-year-old. What? A, let's brainstorm. You will be wishing for a Cliff to jump off of by the end of it. Yeah, yeah. So the next day, they're packing to leave, and the two older siblings, the brother and sister, are out canoeing while the youngest one colors pictures of the Indian princess. Mm -hmm. Who killed herself? Like, what? What kind of fucked up coloring book does this girl have? <laughs> I'm going to make the noose purple and pink. What? <laughs> What are you trying? Don't draw that. <laughs> so, oh, I ran out of red crayon again. <laughs> she just exploded at the bottom, Dad. She exploded. 
Like they don't have ancient Indian dental records, but like <laughs> seriously, like someone dropped a Chicago pizza. <laughs> That's what I'm drawing here, Dad. <laughs> so the uh, so Dad looks out over the lake. He sees the kids in the canoe. The older daughter stands up in the canoe and is like, "Hey, Dad, I'm standing up in a canoe dangerously." And so the canoe tips over, and the son gets knocked un oh, I, unconscious. I, yes. I guess. Why would like did the boom hit him when they were jibing in their plastic <laughs> kayak? Yeah, I am the least outdoorsy person who doesn't live in a bubble in the <laughs> world. And I know you can just come up underneath the kayak and be like, ha ha, I fell out. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, but no, but he's trapped under the canoe. So dad must rescue him. So he runs off the dock and he jumps out and he swims and he gets the kid and then he does CPR because you know, that always works. Yeah, that's how drowning works, by the way. You're brain dead for like a minute and a half and you wake up and you're just like, Ugh, totally fine. My brain had no oxygen for a minute and a half. I remember my times tables. And <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I will not be at the front of a baseball game for the rest of my life. <laughs> I wanted them to argue about the CPR, though, on the dock. They never have any like realistic like, no, you're just hands only is not for drowning. You're supposed to do the old one. And then they are all a kid just like wakes up and like rolls back into the lake. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, but while dad was busy being heroic and everything and helping the the the, the son, the youngest daughter disappeared. Right. And let's well, okay, let's talk about this. We're supposed to assume a serial child murderer just hung out by this campsite and was just like, uh uh, uh no, no, not yet. <laughs> What? All right. Oh, this drowning seems like good misdirection. Hey, what's going on? Um, come on, let's, uh, let's go murder you. <laughs> yeah, it seems like an odd uh, mo. But yeah, he's like he's been like, man, I've been here every week this fucking summer. If some kid doesn't drown in this goddamn lake, I'm going to a different camp next week. <laughs> So he rushes off to find Missy. And of course, I'm thinking you named her Missy. You were asking for this. Also, you left your kid all alone at the fucking campsite, which, look, I know the scientist that Thomas had on his show said is totally fine, but this is what happens. <laughs> <laughs> Helicopter dad in training. I just wrote, have you checked the septic tank or is this a Protestant movie? <laughs> Eli's going to be a fleet of drones, dad, by the way. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> right. <laughs> to my living children. <laughs> Oh, my dad was kind of a helicopter dad. But then again, no one fucked me to death. <laughs> little bit so, of this, little bit of that. Oh, because so, our generation turned out so great. We're crushing it. <laughs> so so we end up with the... Okay, so Your the generation. cops show up to look for the little girl and they find a mysterious ladybug pin that will never pay off right where she was. This is apparently the... The signature ladybug pin of a known child yeah. serial rapist. He has a calling card and it's a ladybug pin. It's weird. <laughs> the guy what? sitting in at Claire's. Uh, so, sir, how can I help you today? Okay, this is going to be crazy. This is what I'm looking for. I'm looking for like 150 pins for me to leave everywhere I abduct a child. Oh, okay, <laughs> right over here. <laughs> Um, the unicorn killer is pretty popular right now. You don't want to be a copycat. How about ladybug? <laughs> <laughs> ladybug killer. No, that oh, that's, makes good. Sense. that's good. That's good. I, I, I specialize in little girls. <laughs> so no. And, and also, by the way, the cops here are so fucking inappropriate. Like they, they keep coming up to him. Like, like, like one cop's like, Hey, Mr. Phillips, we're really sorry, but, um, your daughter is so murder fucked right now. Ooh. Oh, I mean, you just don't even know. Oh. Uh, hey, everyone with a daughter, raise their hand. <laughs> Not so oh, bad. no, you still have the one. You still have the one. You can oh, raise okay. one hand. You yeah. raise it halfway. Yeah. Go get your surviving kids. I mean, your kids. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. <laughs> just your kids. That's all the kids and you have now. They see they're genuinely excited. The cops, they, they're not doing any emotions right no. here. They're like, hey, good news. We know what happened. It's a serial rapist. <laughs> like, it's, we're, well, it's good for us anyway. We've been we've been looking for this guy. Maybe, maybe this helps. It's not all about you. <laughs> I mean, like, we're like doing cases here. It is good news for some of us. Don't be a dick. I saw one of, one of them to come up and say, uh, Mr. Phillips, we found your daughter. Looks like she jumped off a cliff to cure AIDS. 
Any idea where she would have gotten a crazy idea like that? No, I don't. I just, I couldn't imagine. Looks up at the sky. Great spirit. (laughs) (laughs) So now we go to the, uh, I guess, the kidnapping command center where he joins up with his wife. I love, I love to, this is, this will happen so much in the movie. Like she'll come up and she'll go like, it's not your fault. And I want him to go like, I know. I I mean, nobody, I was saving the other kid's life. Mm. I mean, Mm. why would you? Is it? It's not not his fault, right? <laughs> like, oh no! There. Hey, I'm so sorry. Will you watch my daughter and then go, <laughs> <laughs> or just let God drown your son? Like, don't fuck with the plan. <laughs> yeah. Don't question. A lot of, I just Bad I Christian. feel like I don't want to get too. I don't want to go on the record as saying it's not his fault at all. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I feel like I can make that jump. All right. So, okay. And now someone explain this part to me. Cause as the, as him and his wife are hugging and talking about how it's not his fault and whatnot, the cops come in and they're like, Mr. Phillips, we found in the uh, truck in the woods. We need to go right now. Why the fuck does he need to go? What? Look. What? Pictures. Pictures. <laughs> they're, they're like waiting on the dad to conduct their FBI operation here. Yeah. Like, they're just, just like agents watching a guy rape a little girl. They're just waiting for the dad to be like, yeah, that's her. That yeah. That's her. We don't yeah, want to no. have the wrong arre- you can arrest him murder now. raped girl. <laughs> that's totally her. Mr. Phillips, you're going to want to see this shit. I mean, what's, <laughs> holy shit. So so they take a helicopter out to this shack in the woods on the mountains and he walks in and there's an FBI lady like standing in there and she just kind of nods over to him like, no, over there. I'm just like, this is the worst possible way to do this, guys. They yeah. brought they brought dad so he could get a dramatic reveal about his kid getting raped and murdered. Right. That's what ha- the FBI is like meeting before. How do we tell dad? Like. Verbally? No, 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 he'll forget. Like, dramatic reveal. More dramatic. visual. We'll do a dramatic reveal. Wait, wait, wait. Let's put up a curtain. And... <laughs> <laughs> what? What? A new car. Wait, no, what? no, it's your dead kid. Where, did, dead the kid. Bloody where did the bloody come? dress come from? <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, and by the way, at this point, Sam Worthington, for the first time, has to really, just like show some emotion. So he, he, like, cries here and reminds us, why his career hit that ceiling when he was no longer animated blue by somebody who could fix the emotions. <laughs> oh, and it's so good because he's he's got the Australian accent and he's trying to do the near that Australians do. But he so he opens his he's like, no, near. So he goes to his neighbor, right? Okay, so we're back in the time where he's in the winter and he was plowing the thing and he's got the letter that was from Papa. And so his instinct is to go to his neighbor to ask if he's starting another dead daughter prank war. <laughs> <laughs> so weird. These, these neighbors have a weird relationship. <laughs> Don't they? <laughs> Just like cut to a week earlier and like Sam Worthington's hooking up Christmas lights that say dead wife with an arrow pointing at the neighbor's <laughs> eye. Okay, come on. Come on. Oh, shit. Really? I'm going to prank you about your dead daughter. And the guy's like, hey, man, we're friends. I wouldn't make a joke about your dead. It seems weird that you would even ask, why did this occur to you that I may have done this? Yeah. Not just, hey, we're friends. I wouldn't do that. Hey, I'm a human being. I wouldn't do that. (laughs) Yeah, exactly. I'm not a Shakespeare villain. So and, he, and the neighbor goes, you should call the police. Sam Worthington goes, and say what? That I have a mysterious letter that may or may not have been written by God? He's like, no. No. Not no, that. Not at all. No. Just no, saying. <laughs> just I have a letter that seems to have some knowledge of my, just that, that that's all you really need to, I don't, anyway. Yeah, but th- this is where they reveal that oh, there were no tracks in the snow by the mailbox. So unless like a letter could somehow <laughs> sit there for a day and go, go unnoticed. In a snowy day when you weren't outside. Hold on, hold on. I didn't know this. God, uh, God parachuted in and the poison was in the ice. <laughs> <laughs> no. The killer is still there. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Okay. So so his family gets home the next day while he's asleep on the couch. And, and we need this scene because we have to know that everyone hates everyone now. Yes. <laughs> This is almost a movie bingo at this point that, that whenever there's any loss in any family, everyone's just like, fuck you. <laughs> yeah, <right. laughs> yeah, it's just this bitter, waspy family. Like they're, they're not even eating dinner just for no reason. It's like, mom, will you tell my sister to please pass the salt and stop colluding with rapists to create diversions? <laughs> please. <laughs> All right. For once in her life. 
<laughs> I'm going to put it on my wound. Right. And we know it from my wound. <laughs> this is a movie trope, uh, but mom's got her hair back, which is classic movie for kid is dead. Yeah. <laughs> I'm depressed and I don't care anymore. So I'm wearing a ponytail. Yeah. And, and, and mom says like, hey, you know, dad and children, we all need counseling. And dad's like, no, we don't. And then the movie vindicates dad. Fuck this movie. Don't forget we love each other. Also is how she ends this scene. Yes. <laughs> she turns to him and she's like, hey, don't forget we love each other. And I wrote in my notes, something happy couples say all the time. <laughs> I, I just so wanted to cut her off. Like, don't forget. Yeah, trash goes out on Tuesday. I know uh, We love each, each other. Oh, we love each other. Yeah. Oh, right, right. And the trash goes out is, on Tuesday. Is that where we landed? Now. On love <laughs> all right. Also, and I, I hesitate to even bring this up, all right, because the actress that plays his wife is only like three or four years older than Sam Worthington. But Sam Worthington's like 40 years old, doesn't quite look it. So it looks like a, thir and she looks her age. So it looks like a 32-year-old guy married to a 45-year-old woman. Kind of looks weird the whole Nothing time. Nothing wrong with that. <laughs> <laughs> Nothing wrong with some age difference. No problems in there. Nothing wrong. <laughs> the teenage daughter could probably have played the wife, if you think about it. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know why everyone's so judgy. <laughs> 12, 13 years, either direction, whatever. Yeah. Have you guys ever really Andrew. watched iCarly? It's a good <laughs> show. It's a good show. <laughs> so, okay, so then they, they, he's, he's rid of them, I guess, or like going to get rid of them. But first he's got to go to the post office to get to the bottom of this letter that doesn't right. have a, ma a stamp on it or anything. Yeah, and the postman's like, yeah, I'm the mailman, so I can smell where notes come from, <laughs> asshole. Yeah, like, what's supposed to happen? Hey, can you tell me the origin of this paper? Yeah, it's from Genesis. Maybe God? <laughs> so, I'm a postman. Um, so now we cut to him at a diner with uh, with the neighbor friend, uh, because apparently Mac wants to borrow his four-wheel drive so he can go to the shack and meet with God. And, and his friend is like, have you prayed about this? And he's like, just give me the, just give me the truck. I don't want to. <laughs> don't. Well, and also like, okay, the guy, the friend is like saying about this, at least for a second. He's like, yeah, but what if it's the killer who we know exists and we know can leave letters? And he's like, yeah, what if it's God? And the neighbor's like, yeah, okay. Uh, yeah. I mean, what if it's Elmer Fudd too? But like, what if it's the person that we know exists and would have this information and is a murderer? Yeah. What if he wants to catch them all? <laughs> yeah, see, Homicidal Pokemon Go would have made a way better movie. All right, so, but his buddy agrees, like, hey, okay, you can use my truck, but only if I can come meet God, too, with you. And I think this is like, yeah, this is probably pretty sane, because, yeah, if you kill yourself out there, then my truck's just going to be out there. It'll probably be evidence or something. <laughs> Got to get some tow guy, and there's blood all over the seat, and he's like, oh. Yeah. Looks like an Indian princess jumped off of a cliff into here. <laughs> <laughs> so then we cut to him seeing his, his wife and kids off uh, while his daughter seethes hatred at him through the car window. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I wanted this to escalate into like big fight with the daughter. They're just like all arguing. Then they look over the son's kidnapped. <laughs> <laughs> That would have been great. You need a two quit lady doing that. pins with a note that's like, you need eyes on, eyes on. <laughs> Buddy system. Love ladybug killer. <laughs> yeah, okay. So, and then they leave, and his neighbor pulls up with a GMC so they can go out to the shack. And I want to point this out, okay? Because, so like, he opens up his truck and he's like, look at all the survival equipment that I'm, I'm going to bring that will never be used in this film. And also, apparently, he borrowed a gun from Chekhov. <laughs> he brought a gun in case they want to kill God. <laughs> but but like again, I just I just again just to emphasize how poorly made this movie is. This gun will never fire. I just like like they're going for it. <laughs> but while he's off getting his fishing poles, Max steals the truck and drives off. And he's like, oh fuck, it's like being fifteen again. <laughs> oh. um, <laughs> and his kid comes back in the house. His kids are like, thought you were going on a. Fishing trip. Gagger's canceled. Gagger is canceled. Yeah. <laughs> Crazy. <laughs> so, yeah. So then we cut to Sam Worthington. He's, he's driving along and he's thinking about his dead daughter. So he doesn't even notice that semi and, and almost dies, but doesn't. They're like, look, we can afford to almost wreck a car, guys. That's that's all we got. Also, we just have to point out that, like, he took a helicopter to the shack, but somehow he knows the driving directions there. <laughs> Like he, he was like, no, and he looked down at his phone and he was like, Beep. sorry, I'm just dropping a pin in case I ever have to come back here. 
<laughs> He's maybe thinking about buying property up there. We don't know. We don't know. A lot could have happened in those months. So, okay, so now he pulls up near the shack, and he gets out of the car with the gun in his hand, and he's slipping around on the snow. Like, if they were going for comedy here, this would make sense. But they're not, and still he steps into the shack like Reggie White just threw a nail into it. <laughs> he puts it, he's pointing his gun around in the shack. I wanted so badly for Black Lady God to drop down from the ceiling on top of him. <laughs> <laughs> Man. Silent killer. Papa somebody, loves you, baby. <laughs> I was hoping he'd walk in and see God holding a different dead kid, just like talking to a different dad. Dude, I thought it was next Saturday. Like, <laughs> like fuck, next, man? next. But this well, is the next Saturday. It's Thursday. This is the coming Saturday. Just no, that's say this. next, next if you next, mean next, next. Put a date in your fucking mysterious note. <laughs> <laughs> Send a Google Cal invite. <laughs> right? Come on, what fucking year is it, God? <laughs> um, and but but instead, the shack is empty, so he gets all sad and starts throwing shit around like, oh, all right, but I'm going to fuck up your cabin where you take your dead rape kids. It's going to be a mess next it's time you show up. a good part of morning. I did this to the gym in Ireland. My dad died and they <laughs> did not let me back to that crunch. <laughs> <laughs> Jesus. Good for healing. Fuck. Yeah. <laughs> Just so, me trying to tip a treadmill. <laughs> 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 These are a lot heavier than you sort of look. You, you'd think. <laughs> I really thought I would get that sort of super strength, <laughs> but I'm healing. And so you start it like a soda machine. You got to shake it. You got to wobble. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Help me tip this. Right, we'll, we'll get it. We'll get it. We'll get it. it. Back and forth. All right. All right. Back first. No, back first. He's back. We're going. We're fighting each other. <laughs> Someone at the desk. He's going through a thing. <laughs> Oh, wow. This is so much darker than I thought the murder rape mo uh, movie review would be. <laughs> and then he's going to shoot himself. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And he gets interrupted by a deer. Like, <laughs> by a deer that needs the space next. Dude, like, <laughs> oh, oh, I want him to be like, oh, I'm in here from 4 to 4.30. And the deer's like, it's, it's 4.28. Yeah, till 4.30. <laughs> It's so good. The deer like looks right at him. He's like holding the gun towards his face. I wanted the deer to be like, ooh, awkward. Sorry. <laughs> Just slowly back out. The deer introduces himself. Hi, new to the neighborhood. We brought an edible arrangement. <laughs> <laughs> it's a bear made out of pineapple. <laughs> you seem busy. <laughs> uh, you know what? I'll explain like how long your lawn can get later. <laughs> Yeah, right. But apparently <laughs> in this moment with this deer, the deer looked at him in such a way that said, don't do it, man, because he puts the gun away and decides not to kill himself. And and, and he goes to leave because the deer like winked at him. He's like, all right. Oh, well, yeah. No, no, good no, point. Good right. point oh, deer negotiator wing. deer. Where's that movie? <laughs> <laughs> it's just the negotiator, but with a deer. Yeah. Instead yeah, he's negotiating between fat camel and hellbound kangaroo. <laughs> just singing and jumper like Jim Carrey. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, so but he leaves and he's about to go to the back to the truck, but there's a person walking in the woods, so he decides to hide behind a tree and murder that person. And look, <laughs> here's the thing. This is gonna turn out to be Jesus, but crazy billionaire remake of this movie, he just shoots Jesus in the head and God comes running out and he's like, Oh fuck. God, he's a person. This is the one of us that can die. God. It's gonna take me three days to fix this shit. Yeah. Well, I hope you'd like being persecuted forever. Because yeah, the last people that did this is a whole thing. In a couple thousand years, people are gonna be arguing about whether or not it's okay to punch people who killed you. It's a whole thing, trust me. Uh, starting you over from up. scratch. God damn it. I'm going to have to have Jesus out to my cabin to forgive you. It's going to be a whole thing. <laughs> We're only have two out of three of us to do that. It's, it's weird. <laughs> yeah, so this random innocent human walks by and he leaps from cover and points a gun to his face. But luckily, it's a Middle Eastern guy. He's used to this kind of shit. Happens all the time. He's like, yeah, come on up. Have a not beer. Because... <laughs> We're not going to drink in this movie. I would have enjoyed a playful snowball fight here. 
If that's like, like <laughs> if it just like evolved into a sexual thing and they tackle each other. We almost get that. We get so close to that before the movie. It so becomes is, very sexual. Yeah. Coming up oh, here. yeah. Yes. He almost fucks every member of the Holy Trinity. Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> and OK, so he follows Jesus up the mountain and it turns from winter to summer in a scene that should just have singing cartoon animals in it. <laughs> <Just> yes. Tweeting <laughs> birds put a cape on him. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Right. And OK, I want to point this out because I've spent a lot of time in my life in the mountains. The fact that he walks from winter into summer, this will be the only evidence he has that these people are God for like most of this movie. Right. They, like he's never going to ask from the uh, to see a miracle or anything. This is all the this. This shit happens all the time in the mountains. You walk from one season to the other. Elevation changes. The shadows change. South side of the mountain, north side of the mountain, that kind of shit. That just happens in the mountains. That's not that big. I mean, it wouldn't happen for days or whatever, but that just fucking happens. That's not a big deal. Oh, see, you just missed an opportunity to convince me you have magic powers. Because if you ever were just like, <laughs> hey, look at this. Say winter, summer. I would have been like, huh. magic powers. <laughs> magic powers. <laughs> I don't know enough about mountains. <laughs> I am convinced. Yeah. So, so I he, forgive my rapist. <laughs> <laughs> you got me. Yeah. No illusions, rape forgiveness services. Uh, just keep going up. Pairs um, very well with my Lyme disease removal. Services. <laughs> <laughs> I don't want to say how. <laughs> we call it an ancillary. It's called an ancillary business. Horizontal yeah. integration. What is it? vertical? <laughs> it's one. So he follows Jesus to a, a lake house, and this is where we're reintroduced to the magical black lady. Oh, and her greeting is so long and so racist, the SPLC should put it on the list. She's <laughs> like, Mackenzie <laughs> Allen Phillips, as I live and breathe up and down and all <laughs> around, happy birthday and no more, Mr. N it's so long. <laughs> just like, oh, please stop. Please stop, Octavia. Please. <laughs> so he comes in. Okay, so now there are there are three people in this in this lake house that will eventually turn out to be the It's, it's the Holy Trinity, right? Yes. Okay. Uh -huh, yeah. I always pictured heaven as like Megan Kelly, Black Santa, and and hot Asian lady. So like close yes, to that. Yeah, yeah, like, yeah, yeah, exactly. About to be, One yeah, third. They're close. Yeah, not not so bad. Um, but I love here. Okay, so she's like I see you have a gun. Can I take that from you? I wanted him to like just rape him at gunpoint. Shouldn't have given up the gun, motherfucker. But <laughs> but let's think about this logically. Okay, so what just happened here is a, is an armed man who pulled a gun on a stranger walked into their house, right? So like it's very possible that they're like, let me take your hand. And go. He seems to think we're the Holy Trinity, y'all. Should we just play along? He had yeah. a gun. <laughs> Yeah, let's, let's play just play along. along. He's that, violent. <laughs> it could have been the whole movie. Anyway. I wanted this to be a swinger community more than anything. <laughs> house with an Arabic guy, a hot Asian, and an old black lady. Yeah. <laughs> I'd run the, through that gamut. Um, the Asian lady's last name, by the way, looks so much like masturbate when you first... It's Matsubara. But when you first glance at it, it looks so much like mas masturbate. So, yeah. So, the old black lady is God. The Jewish Mexican is Jesus. And the retired foot porn actress is the Holy Spirit. I guess. And she's so awkward because, like, she didn't get a book. She's just, like, a dove and a couple of thoughts. So they don't know how to represent her. They're just like, so, what's new with you? And she's like, I, I, I collect tears. What? What? Yeah, figured we would. That's weird. <laughs> well, Asian lady with a tear collection. I have a Google alert for that. That's cool. <laughs> with that. Anna turned to me because I brought her to this movie and she goes, I would karate chop her in the throat if she's just like, oh, let me get it. I got Ow. Yeah, no, those are my tears. You try Mine. to take, that's weird. That's just fucking weird. So yeah, so he, he doesn't know how to handle it. So he steps outside. Um, but he doesn't leave. I love. I would love if he's like, oh, my God, I pulled a gun on Jesus. My mom would be so pissed. <laughs> um, but instead, he rips up the note and throws it away or whatever and, and, and wanders off to the deck by the lake. Um, and Jesus follows him and Jesus has restored the ripped up note. And I'm like, for fuck's sake, you're supposed to at least make him sign it first. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, like, he needed more proof. Here, like, oh, Times New Roman, it checks out. Cool. Yeah, yeah. Right. No, that's right. You know he typed the note. Was the wormhole was this your note? <laughs> <laughs> it's the only note that was in the deck, though, man. I mean, that was, you just had the one. Yeah, but apparently that's all the evidence he needs, that he's talking to the holy fucking Trinity. Right, and he's like, so, 
can I do what I want here? And he's like, you're free to do whatever you like. And I was like, fuck the Holy Spirit. Fuck the Holy Spirit. <laughs> also, and Octavia. <laughs> yeah. Also, Jesus has this moment where he, he has this weird accent. I don't know what this actor was going for, but he's like, you're going to be all right. I wanted him to be like, you can do it. <laughs> <laughs> So, yeah, so he decides to go back inside where God is cooking. And she's like, I'm wearing your mom's perfume. I smell just like your mom. And I wrote, that's fucking weird. And Eli wrote, I'm into it. That <laughs> happens about the same stimulus so often in our notes. <laughs> and I wrote, Heath must be splattered in cum right now. So I feel like <laughs> we know where everyone was at this point in the movie. I, I was splattered in cum, but like, <laughs> why'd you guess I was right now? <laughs> I don't, whatever. I'm seriously asking, like, why, like, why would I be splattered in cum right now specifically? <laughs> whatever. <laughs> So now it's time to bake bread with God. This movie is a Mother Grimm story as told by a fundamentalist who accidentally ate a fucking pot brownie. And, watch, and watched The Matrix and decided to steal the Oracle character. It, well, also. Right, right. Very clearly, yeah. I wanted him so badly to turn to her and just be like, so while we're uh, making bread, why'd you let my daughter get raped to death? <laughs> well, but he <laughs> well, kind of did. That's pretty much what happens. <laughs> like, I know you... No, you're kind of pissed. Uh, is it because I, I had a murder rapist murder rape your daughter? Yes. Yes, it is. Let's talk figured, about this. Figure that might be. <laughs> That's what this conversation is. Yeah, yeah. Let's, Let's get the a... elephant in the room out of the way. Yes, I'm black. <laughs> <laughs> I wrote my notes at this point. It's like, I'm glad that talking like an American is hard for Sam. It makes me feel more like I'm accomplishing something right now. You know, I'm doing something <laughs> that's difficult. Anyway, yeah. So God jingles some keys about the the rape daughter, and to his credit, Sam Worthington's character is like, "Could you please stop jingling those 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 fucking keys? You murder raped my my daughter, or allowed right. that to happen." So yeah. her answer is, "I never left her," and he's like, "No, no, 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 no. I didn't ask if you were in the room. I asked why you didn't stop. It's not about present. I was right there. Look, <laughs> here's me taking a selfie with them." <laughs> <laughs> this one's hard because you can just see his back, but he's oh, there. God. She's, she is there. <laughs> but it's like, seriously, and he's like, that's not a good answer. And she's like, never next lines is. <laughs> <laughs> right? <laughs> well, yeah. And, and then I guess that's enough for him because he moves on to the next subject. He's like, well, you know, I mean, I feel like you make a habit of killing people's kids. Heard about your kid. <laughs> um,. But but she's like, oh, you don't understand. And she holds up her wrist and she also has the stigmata. So now it makes sense. Yeah. Are we going for sense? Um, and she says here, she goes, I'm not who you think I am. And I wrote Viola Davis. <laughs> <laughs> Fuck. <laughs> <laughs> yes, but, but instead she says, love always leaves a mark. God, abusive husbands and people who come early. She was just like, wait, one second, I got to pause. Love always leaves a mark. All right, great. There you go. That's for the cover of the DVD. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And God also says like, yeah, no, I, I, I technically, yes, I did let your daughter get murdered, but I never left your daughter. Yeah. So God just like jerked off in the corner like cuck porn and watch this happen? What the fuck? I guess. I never left you is what I'm going to apologize for for whenever I do something wrong ever yeah. again. <laughs> I never left you. No, I wanted you to leave though. I, I wanted asked you, you to leave. I specifically I said, said, but I never left you. I, te I tased you and somehow you pulled the barbs out of your body. Ah, details. <laughs> right, but I guess he just can't handle the murder rape apologetics just yet so he goes outside to look at a cgi blue jay okay um by the way i, I start to fall asleep here um <laughs> like and literally i halfway through a note like i had my little notepad i wrote <laughs> if you're real scribble scribble pen line off the page any ideas what i was starting to write Can you, um I, I, probably something about a bird wrangler watching this scene going for fuck's sake you just need him to sit on a branch and you didn't call me <laughs> yeah. so you didn't need him to fucking he didn't have to fight oh i missed the bird yeah. <laughs> and that great line where uh, God slash Octavia Spencer says, that bird was created to sing. You were created to be loved. Your daughter was created to be raped to death. See, we all have our own special thing. <laughs> <laughs> Just, you have to. Yeah. Uh, with this bullshit. 
Yeah, so then we cut to that evening where, like, he's sitting around having dinner with the Holy Trinity, and I'm like, oh, my God, this is boring when it's people you like. Yeah, huh. making small talk with God the movie. <sighs> okay. Because they they literally say, so, um, Josh has a girlfriend now. <laughs> yep. <laughs> That's the actual line. <laughs> mm. All right. I, She's nice. <laughs> All right, I remember something. I had I, I was naked giving a speech to my French class in high school. I think I was asleep for this scene too. Yes. <laughs> you guys, did that happen? Um, no? you know, I, I would have enjoyed the movie more. Yeah, no, it didn't. It okay. didn't. And also, okay, so this is like we we get this cliche all the time. Apparently, God cooks really good, but you can't tell that's what Worthington's going for because he reacts like if if he was reacting to they just served me the eyeball of a human being this would be the dead on spot on fucking reaction right yeah i mean look i know they don't have good food in australia because like the only meat there is like kangaroo and spider but like mm, <laughs> yummy no right one, again <laughs> take a hundred of your 20 million dollar budget and get the that doesn't sound american guy to also go mm -mm, good yeah something delish right. Well, I, 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 like he's he has to eventually explain. He's like, wow, this food is really good in case you couldn't tell what emotion I was going for. So, yeah. <laughs> and then he he asks the, the Holy Spirit. He's like, OK, you guys have been talking to me all day. But if you're omniscient, you know what I'm going to say. Why would you even ask? Because omniscience makes no fucking sense, bro. Six year olds destroy this worldview twice in act one. And she didn't even have the sense not to take ladybugs from a hairy palm stranger in a trench coat, dude. I mean, what, 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 what you think I've got an answer here? Anyway. Yeah. And their answer is like, yeah, but we, we, we like talking to you. Like a stepdad trying to win over his kid, just like, <laughs> hey, hey, come on. <laughs> so, any girls at school? You know there are girls at school. I just wanted to hear you say it. All right. Yeah. So, but instead of answering the fucking fatal flaw in their worldview, uh, instead, God sends Mac out with Jesus so that Jesus can show him some of his handiwork. Uh, his handiwork, by the way, is the night sky. Fuck you. Again, uh, just like, oh, God, we did so badly during those rape apologetics. What <laughs> if Jesus makes shooting stars? <laughs> going, going, going. Yeah. Great. So you've been working on shooting stars. Cool. Cool. Well, if you get a chance, just, you know, next time you're doing that, take a five minute break. Maybe stop all the child raping. <laughs> just and if you've got your pet project there, just thought, though. When you get a minute. I mean, I know vaporizing grains of space does look cool and everything, but there's a reason why you were 33 Ooh, and single, There's another asshole. one, but seriously, the rape. Yeah, thing. no, right, yeah. And um, look, I've been in environments where I ate with an Asian lady, a black lady, and then an Arabic guy took me outside to talk to me about the sky, but I got to fuck everyone, and there were drugs. That's all I said. <laughs> exactly, exactly. I'm nothing there against are certain the scenario. Expectations <laughs> in a situation like that. Yeah, right, right. So, and, and, and like, but I guess we have to, like, this is the buddy cop moment with Jesus. He's like, all right, well, I'm still pretty mad about the rape killing my daughter, but you're all right, Jesus. You're pretty all right. <laughs> you're good. You're good. Um, and then he heads to, to, to bed and he opens up the bedside drawer and there's a Bible in it, which apparently was the funniest thing the old ladies in the theater <laughs> with us had ever seen in their lives. God's a passive aggressive B&B &B owner in <laughs> Ireland. <laughs> <laughs> oh, congratulations on your man. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, I get it. I'm going to go fuck in your guest room. <laughs> I wanted to open up the Bible and it's just like hollowed out with a dildo inside. He's like, oh, this is perfect. All right. Nice. Octavia, let's get this going. She is omniscient. Yeah. He needs to sleep in his God vision. What? Yeah. So now this is the only realistic moment in the movie, though, because he starts reading the Bible and two pages in. He's dead ass asleep. <laughs> dreaming about when he was in Avatar. No doubt. <laughs> oh, Sigourney Weaver. No, I don't want to be healed by crystals. No. <laughs> <laughs> you went super crazy after Alien, man. <laughs> I get it, man. And and you then didn't age well, man. <laughs> She's crazy. Whatever. Hot. I think what she the, yeah. yeah what? what the hell are you no, talking? Oh, okay. What Dynasty are you open for, oh, yeah. married man? <laughs> um, and I like older women. <laughs> My wife is gonna look the way she does forever. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and so then he has to dream about chasing his daughter. A little bit. 
um, so that we can remind them, everybody that, yeah, no, there was totally a murder raped little girl in this movie. I didn't want you to just get all like caught up in the shooting stars and whatnot. Murder rape. So the next mo uh, morning, God is cooking again, which is about 90% of what black women do in movies. <laughs> Not just in Christian movies. You know, this is pretty universal, but yeah. So, and, and this is also where God decides to tell him that she's a Neil Young fan. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, I mean, that's fine. That's fine. Neil Young's cool, but no follow up questions on that. Like, I feel like they, they would have, they would have discussed more, more about who God would actually like. I feel like there'd be an argument in the writer's room about it. <laughs> <laughs> I kind of feel like he would say something about those guys from God's Not Dead. Who are those guys? <laughs> he probably, she probably likes them better. Cause he says, Anyone you're not fond of? And she's like, no. Nope. Yeah, and all of us wrote Hitler. Every, like, <laughs> we all have, like, three Hitler notes immediately after that, don't we? Yes, we do. Yeah. Okay, you said nope. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to try that differently. Um, who do you like better, Hitler or Jewish people? Yes? <laughs> <laughs> okay. No hard stance one way or the other on the Holocaust. Cool. <laughs> yeah. Just one other question. Aren't you a wrathful bitch? No. That, and that's... Ooh. That's her answer. Yeah, yeah right. Well, that. that's where he goes because he's like, yeah, I was just reading your book and, you know, there's all the Amalekite blood and the, the world drowning stuff in there. You're kind of the bad guy, right? <laughs> what are you? And then she starts acting like Jeff Sessions at a confirmation hearing. Yeah. Sin is its own punishment, except when I fucking killed the world. That <laughs> that was a punishment. Well, the, that world was all flooded when I showed up, baby. <laughs> <laughs> Those children chose to get eaten by them she bears. I don't know what you're talking about. Yeah. Just Octavia Spencer getting arrested on cops with a flooded world next to her. Just like, <laughs> what happened was, okay, here's what happened. What happened was, I was, I borrowed a, a motorcycle from my friend, and he said, "You better." He. <laughs> so so now she, <laughs> you all know exactly that episode. Oh, certain cops. sentences do not end in cops. No, no, you're right. You're right. Yeah, no, that's that's where the sentence ends. So no, so now uh, God uses the keyhole analogy. Okay, so let's follow this analogy. You're only seeing your child being raped to death through a keyhole, but if you could see more, you would see that that was a moral act. What the fuck else is happening in this room? Yeah, we, you got to expand, expand that picture for, okay, you're God. Now's your chance to expand that picture and be like, and you see that powered the machine that cured <laughs> all the cancer. What? And there's no, yeah, that, like, if that was the power to the cancer curing machine, we'd be like, well, we got to find a new right. power source for the cancer curing well, machine, right. don't we? <laughs> yes. Well, look, yeah, murder raping children is not, you have to tell this to a lot of fucking religious people and religious leaders, apparently, but raping children is not a context kind of thing. <laughs> You know, it's not like, well, I raped that child in self-defense. No, there are the, there are certain things where there is no context where it becomes moral. Yeah. So and and this is OK. So he's trying to get out and he comes across Sarayu, the uh, the Asian Holy Spirit lady out by the garden. And I just love this line. She says, if you're looking for your truck, it's just past the trees. They're in a fucking forest. <laughs> yes, it would be past trees. Thank you. For that. The universe yeah. is past trees. I appreciate it. <laughs> <laughs> nice. Thanks. So basically, it's not inside a tree. Is what I said. <laughs> I'll look for all the not inside trees areas. Not on a tree or, yeah, yeah, under a tree, buried. In, beneath, yeah. But before he leaves, he should garden with her. And she walks him through the garden and she's like, this is my garden. What do you think? And it sucks. It's just like brambles everywhere. It's garbage. It's yeah. terrible. <laughs> yeah. Well, and, and, and I wanted it like, basically this is how this should go. Like he walks in and goes, wow, your garden looks like an analogy for my soul. This is an analogy. Oh fuck. You beat me to it. <laughs> yeah, damn it. The seat is so heavy head. Like it might as well be labeled like a political cartoon with like <laughs> black lines and arrows <laughs> right. pointing to everything. So stupid. <laughs> Just we'll Obama stepping soul. in. I'm going to need a quarter of that. <laughs> <laughs> Anti-federalist. Wah, wah. <laughs> All right. Yeah, they, she does this whole, like, you have to help me garden. And she's like, oh, don't touch that root. It's highly poisonous. But if you mix it with this flower, it's a medicine. Like, why not just have the medicine in the root, lady? 
I love it so much because she's like, the sap from this twig will kill you, but if you combine it with the flower, it heals you. That's not how that works. <laughs> it's like, no, 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 take a bite from each. Um, oh, dying, dying. Ah, my cat just killed. <laughs> what? Why did you make the poison? Well, well, somebody needs to be doing the raping. I mean, like, yes. this feels like a bad system. Can you just skip the poison oh. one? No. Really, kid who poisoned his dad? You want to know why we need the poison one? Yes. Okay. <laughs> really? Because in that one little fight you had, you went down like a bitch. That's why. That's why we need poison. For Stop. people that are taller than you. That's why. <laughs> So, all right, so now we get to this, and every Christian apologetics movie has this moment, right, where, and this one has several, where the the, the main character has to be impossibly bad at answering simple questions for their point to make sense. Yeah. Right, this is where the, the Holy Spirit chick is saying, like, hmm, what is this good and evil of which you speak? Can you define them for me such that every single instance will be encompassed by them in no. this moment? No. Well, then, it seems that you are wrong. No, we can just continue this conversation. <laughs> tell you what, quiz me. Go ahead, throw a couple. I tell you what, na rape, wrong. All right, ready? Yeah, yeah, right. Stealing bread to feed your sister's son, complicated. Look at us. We're, we're nailing this. <laughs> two for two. <laughs> well, and, and, and look, if the character then turns to her and says, I, I, I tend to go with uh, that which minimizes harm while maximizing freedom, she, she would have nowhere to go. She would have been like, oh, fuck. No, that's pretty, oh, that's pretty good. It's not, it's not mine. I read it on a blog. What so. about if the, oh, shit, that was a great. Um, that does it, doesn't it? But what if the rape is needed to power the cancer machine? <laughs> <laughs> she also says, have you ever been wrong about what's evil? And I got to say, like, look, I'm sure there are people out there, but like being wrong doesn't mean that like it's impossible to know a thing. Oh, yeah, right. <laughs> and can we talk about the powering the cancer healing machine? I mean, wouldn't consensual do it if it was the same? <laughs> Couldn't we just have consensual sex? No, it's the, the fear thing? and anger. Yeah, no, it's 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 a whole thing. It's like Monsters, Inc., but way darker. Yeah. And then I, I love to that remake. <laughs> Crazy billionaire money away. <laughs> Um, so, yeah. And, and also, I love to at the end of this scene, she goes like this garden represents you. We honestly thought our audience still <laughs> needed that spelled out for them. Yeah, it says metaphor with an arrow that points at me wherever <laughs> I go in this ridiculous scene. I know. Thank you. All right. Well, unlike this movie, we recognize when a person needs to stand up and take a piss or something. So we're going to pause for a quick break. But before we do, let me give Act 3 the hard sell. Will Mac forgive God for being so callous about the murder rape? Will God forgive Mac for being so bitchy about the murder rape? If the Holy Trinity had a pan-racial menage with trois, would that be considered masturbation? Find out the answers to the less interesting of these questions and more when we return for the laborious conclusion of The Shack. Why, hello there, Noah. Hey, how's it going? You can call me Illusion or Papa. Right. What, what, are, you, what are you doing? Uh, yeah, no, I get it. You're you're God. I just I, I I figured you do this kind of thing occasionally. Uh, well, uh, uh, well, I have been known to reach out to the children I'm especially hey, especially fond of. Yeah, I got it. Okay, well, I'm not buying this, so I'm gonna break a bunch of your shit. And whenever you do this, I presume forever you're gonna remember that one of us showed up and took a shit on your bread dough. You took a shit on my bread dough. Sure did. That is ruined now. Not necessarily. I'll eat it. <laughs> Want to split it? Hey, get out of here. <laughs> you go back to the garden now. <laughs> Sourdough? Now you, Heath Enright and Eli Bosnick, shall be wisdom. Cool. Cool. Got it. Sure. All right. Who goes to hell? The murderer? The drunk? The rapist? Uh, none of them. Yeah. yeah no, no, uh, nobody goes to hell. We just don't let them... Do crimes? We y yes, oh. but when they do, you no, you're not listening. Right? right. No, no. Okay. okay. Let, let me try here. Catch this rock. See? See what I'm saying? S see what? You caught the rock. You stopped it. We're, we're going to do that. We're going to stop bad stuff. This is so stupid. It's a cave. Uh, no, 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 yeah, no. I have no idea. See, here is judgment. Who is to say what is right and wrong? Oh, I'm going to stop you right there. Us. We collectively. Right. 
You're right. Over time, that's how it works. Yeah, last time you gave us rules, they included hand chopping and slavery. Why a cave? Right, but 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 what of free will? The not thing a thing. That have- not a thing. Not uh, a yeah, thing. Uh, yeah. How about people keep it right next to their psychic powers? That's what we're. Oh, with oh, the free will. oh, okay. Then which of your children? Uh, still are you- none. Still none. Jesus, it's so damp. Okay, fine. You guys do it then. Yay! Okay, we're judgment now. Woo! Okay. Yeah. All right. Pants are a sin. Yes, thank you. Big one. Ugh, worse than rape. <laughs> <laughs> and we're back for more of this shack. And when we last left our hero, he was considering sticking around at God's lake house after all, on account of that awesome garden metaphor that was disguising the fact that this movie absolutely had nothing to stay except for, dude, you're all kinds of fucked up. So we rejoin him wandering back to the house where Jesus is carpenting mm-hmm. as he's wanting to do. Making a shelf. Yeah. It's not a chair, but it's pretty cool still. Um, and Jesus says, hey, man, why don't you go out on the water in a boat so I can sh- show you. The walking on water thing? No, no. It was a thing. I was going to, well, maybe. <laughs> You ruined it now, but go on the boat. <laughs> I'll meet you in a minute. I got some orders to fill. <laughs> yeah, right. Okay, yeah. so I got six Wunder Snooner dits to make <laughs> and four Gelertens. <laughs> What's a Gelertin? So he, he so he goes out on the boat, and it wouldn't you know it, it's a nightmare boat. Ugh. Nightmare boat. <laughs> and his boat starts to fill with black water and blood. You know, that old story. Yeah, dead kids floating to the surface of the water. <laughs> Going to Eli's lake house. But luckily, just in time, Jesus comes over and he's like, hey, 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 don't think about that. <laughs> <laughs> Literally, that <laughs> is it. it. <laughs> to, to cut it out. <laughs> Stop being all on a devil boat, bro. So Jesus walks out on the water, surprise, surprise, to calm him down and to calm the angry, bloody, dead kid waters. <laughs> Dad's like, okay, yeah, like, I get it. I, I called it, actually. I see you walking on water right now, but you're still accessory to murder rape. That's not like, I'm not <laughs> switching. But literally 10 seconds later, he's like, yay, water walking. I understand rape in the universe. Cool. Hey, well, right. Yeah, exactly. Because Jesus, like, loans him his water walking powers here or whatever. And yeah. that's enough to convince. Okay, first of all, what a boring fucking super... That would be like walking on the ground, right? I mean, we can yep. already walk on things. This is yeah, the, walking on the ground is, a, is not a power. No, it's not. But also, this is... The, the, the Blue Jay was the first example, but this is also another spot where the CGI is terrible and this does not seem like a tough thing to CGI. Mm-mm. Right? Nope, not at all. I'm gonna gonna go with a good old Chris Angel here and say some plexiglass on top of a pool was more convincing. <laughs> yeah, and no, seriously, yeah, like that that would have been better. Um, but yeah, so they're walking on water together, and Worthington is way too excited about this. And this is where they have the you know it's not a religion, it's a relationship conversation. Ugh, he says religion is way too much work, and I wrote in my notes, I agree. <laughs> You're right. I think we have uh, different conclusions, but I agree. <laughs> yeah. And he also says, I don't want slaves. I want friends. And I'm like, you know, that's what most people who who steal people say, you know, that they want. <laughs> we just wanted to be. I'm sure the guy who took Brie Larson to the room wanted a girlfriend. Right. So anyway. So, yeah. And, and, and then he's like, you know, I don't care what you call it. I just want people to feel love. I wanted him so bad. He goes, I just want people to be loved. And I wrote, I wrote my notes. Hey, me too. I'm also okay with them being gay. Now you go. Yeah, that's all right. Uh, some <laughs> people, I want, thing out in I half. want some people to be loved. <laughs> he just not- pushes him down into the water. <laughs> <laughs> I want people to be full of love. Like your daughter was. That was inappropriate. I'm sorry. She was full, though. Very full. And then Jesus gives him a side quest. <laughs> He's, he's cribbing his fucking homework off of Yoda at this point. He's like, you must walk this path alone. No, leave your weapons. I'm Without not- <laughs> Gandalf. Okay. Yeah, right. Great. Yeah. So he said, Jesus sends Sam Worthington down a path in the woods, and then it leads to a dead end, and I thought it was supposed to be like a Kung Fu Panda ending. Oh, I'm <laughs> what's at the end of the path. But no, no, he can walk through rocks now, too. It's an- it's a lesser known Jesus power. It's way cooler than the water walking, <laughs> if you ask me. 
Um, but yeah, so he walks into this like rocky cave. I'm like, first you're going to need to find the map. Um, and there will be a special weapon in here somewhere, a compass eventually. But yeah, but instead he comes across a woman on a rock throne, and I'm like, please tell me that's the Indian princess. But, but there's this great awkward moment before he acknowledges the lady. Say, like, and Sam Worthington's clearly pissed at this point. He's like, all right, fuck, fine. Like, who are you, lady on a cave throne? And he, how long were you sitting there waiting for me? This is really weird. <laughs> I've been here for months. I, really, I wanted her to just like be running out of a bathroom in the back. Fuck, seriously. The, oh, the three minutes, I, I said, I just, I, cause I held it, I swear, for like four hours, but you guys just took forever to walk across the lake. And, you know, she made bur breakfast burritos. So I, as, oh, do not go in there. It would not be wise, believe me. Yeah. And, and this is this wisdom. is wisdom. Yeah, that's who this is. She would know. Um, and wisdom is sexy. Uh, that's good. Mm -hmm. That's good. I like yeah, that. And wisdom is here to judge the rape victim's father. Well, yeah, <laughs> yeah. There's some judging going on here. Okay, so she, he's like, oh, judging. She's like, well, you do it all the time, you racist. And I'm like, I was picking up on that too. The, the, the way she kept telling God how much he really does like Cuba Gooding Jr. seemed weird. Seemed weird. She wasn't asking about Cuba Gooding Jr. And I, I wanted her so badly to start bouncing a basketball off his face. Here, you be the judge. You be no, the yeah. judge. You want to be God? <laughs> you want to be the man? Yeah. So, and that's what it is, right? Like, so it's like, it's time for judgment. And he's like, oh, you're going to judge me. No, you will be the judge. You get to sit in the big rock chair throne. Okay. Great. I've never been in a wisdom cave before. Just tell me like what we're fucking doing. This is weird. <laughs> Help me out here. Is the cave required? <laughs> also, <laughs> part of it. Can't we get a better? I mean, Muslims have way better couches. I'm just saying, you've got a wooden, <laughs> like, rock throne thing going on. You didn't even have wood. Anyway, so yeah, but this is where he has to forgive his his dad that abused him and that he killed because his dad right. was also abused. Right. Exactly. And this is this stupid pain justifies abuse trope. And just oh. to be super fucking clear, as though this needed to be spelled out, if you were abused, it doesn't justify abuse. No. And if your abuser was abused, it doesn't justify it. It's funny. Bad behavior doesn't create more bad behavior. Two wrongs don't make a forgiveness. Or well, I don't know really how. In this stupid <laughs> fucking, yeah, right, yeah. right. But her answer is, no, don't you see, like... Adam hit his kids and there's just been a straight line of kid hitting all the way to you. <laughs> I, I wanted him to be like, oh, I feel like I shouldn't stop it then, right? Because like if I don't beat the crap out of my son. Well, no, wait. He okay. won't have an excuse. Um, <laughs> uh, shit, I guess. Okay, what about a guy who just starts? <laughs> <laughs> And, and and also, it's like, you know, a lot of this is, and look at your daughter's rapist. You see him only as evil, but look at him letting that lady cut in front of him at the grocery store. She has more than 11 items. <laughs> <laughs> so weird, yeah. She actually, wisdom lady's actually like, what about murderers, drug dealers, terrorists? Are they evil? And he's like, okay. um, I feel like you want me to say no, but that can't be right. I did want you to say no, I did. <laughs> that is I'm explain right. it. Everybody's evil since... Since Adam. Yeah, well, right. And, and then the point is like, okay, well, nobody's guilty of anything if God exists. She even says that, right? Nobody is right. guilty of anything if God exists. I'm like, except, way to make the opposite of your point, movie. Except God. Well, <laughs> right. Yeah. No, not him. Especially not him. Her. Yes. Him. <laughs> it. Um, so, yeah, but, but he doesn't want to sit in judgment because it's just weird and she doesn't explain the rules to him or anything. So now she wants him to choose which of his kids to burn in hell for eternity. <laughs> oh, oh, neither. <laughs> I just, oh, um, you must choose neither. I made all the rules. Hell's gone now. <laughs> Poof. Ha -ha. Hold on, so one, you want to play a game? <laughs> well, is one of them a rapist? Well, yeah. I does, mean, <laughs> does that really change anything? Yes. Yeah. Well, that's it. <laughs> does okay. it? Yes. So the analogy they're going for here is like, well, if you can't choose which of your kids burn in hell, then why should God? It's like neither of his kids is a child murdering serial rapist. I mean, I feel like that makes the choice easier, doesn't it? 
Yes. Yeah, okay, yeah. And also, by the way, he doesn't have rape-stopping magic. That's the other thing, right? It's not like it's just about, well, are you going to burn this guy in hell for eternity? Because that's a little much no matter what the guy did. But it's also about, like, you could have used your god magic to stop the kid raping. You're not really yeah. addressing that with this analogy, are you? Mm -mm. Yeah. yeah. So, yeah, again, like, in a game where you make the rules and the choice can be neither, you can stop the crimes, which would be problematic enough that you might have to choose one. Or you could at least <laughs> right. make sure the guy got caught later. You could at least drop a note for the cops. <laughs> this is a silly, yeah. like, he raped a lot of kids. It wasn't at just the one. In the movie, my wife, who, again, plays video games throughout all of these mm -hmm. movies, just looks up and goes, out loud, in a theater full of old black ladies, goes, <laughs> What the fuck is happening? Like, Stop. Stop. There are like seven of us in here. Yeah. Yeah. And, and again, it's like they're like, yeah, you know, our rules are so fucked up that if you enforce them, you would be a monster. So we don't enforce them. This scene is nonsense. This scene is nonsense and relies on the stupidity of Sam Worthington's character to not be like, wait, no, you can't. That's that's none wrong. of this makes any kind of sense <laughs> yeah i mean her excuse for kid rape is it was you humans that did all the kid raping not god yeah <sighs> right. and there's even a moment where she goes oh evil you say who made that and i wanted him so badly to be like steve is there a can we go to his cabin and fuck him <laughs> up is there a person <laughs> But he doesn't want to be the judge anymore and i guess that's what she was waiting for for him to admit that her job's real real hard and then a wall of Giggling water opens behind him. Yeah. Right. And <laughs> waterfall opens up. I wanted a Native American girl to just fly past him. Splat. <laughs> just splat. Just explode on the floor in front of him. He's just covered in blood. Oh. Oh. Okay, I'll God. be the judge now, I guess. <laughs> Whoa, someone just dropped like, it's like a thousand cans of tomato sauce. <laughs> um, okay, 9.8. Pike position was good. I'm being a judge. <laughs> But other than that, just a just Russian bad. judge behind him. Yeah. <laughs> or. But instead, what we're getting is a doorway or window or something where he can look into heaven. Mm. Yeah. Heaven. You, you walk through a commercial for Irish Spring soap and then you're in heaven. <laughs> That's Heaven's how it works. just on the left there. Why is heaven always running in a field? We have fields here. Why aren't you playing live action Metroid? Flying a pterodactyl through the rings of Saturn, fucking yourself in your own ass with your gigantic three jointed dick? No fields. You want fields running? I hate running, right? And, and I, I hate, hate all running. those kids. I, I can tell they're <laughs> sticky from here. It's gross. <laughs> God, <laughs> heaven. Oh, honey, you had a popsicle, huh? <laughs> uh, on the back why of your head. No, how did you get yes. it on the back <laughs> of your head? <laughs> Jesus. Why am I touching the back of this kid's head? I, I, it doesn't matter. Because you're making heaven your own. That's why. <laughs> oh, God. I didn't judge your heaven when it was Saturn <laughs> and paradactyls. I'm moving on very quickly. So, yeah, and he wants to make sure that I his... I want to fuck a child. <laughs> this too. I'm going for a super cut. <laughs> the end of the year <laughs> all right set to techno music all right well we gotta get we gotta get eli a cool calling card the ladybug pin is taken what, what yes. can we get him? <laughs> i can have a pterodactyl pin. there you there go, you go. pterodactyl on saturn nailed it yeah so he makes sure that his daughter forgives him for letting her get murder raped which i guess she does and then he heads back down the path where jesus is skipping stones a la reggie white <laughs> Why can no one ever skip stones it's in movies? It's not really that hard to do. <laughs> I'm not an athletic dude, but I know that, like, plunk, that's throwing rocks into water. <laughs> and look, that's fun, too. I'm not saying you can't enjoy throwing rocks into water. It's just not skipping stones. <laughs> so, so Worthington comes down and he turns to Jesus. He's like, yeah, let, thanks for letting me see my murdered daughter. He's like, yeah, it's the least I could do. He's like, yeah, no, it literally is the very least... That the magical, omnipotent person could do. But yeah, thanks anyway. Yeah, for thanks. That. Thanks for letting me listen to my dead daughter's podcast. <laughs> <laughs> and then he wants to go lake walking some more. <laughs> and they have a race. They do. They have a foot race. I laughed way too hard and way too long so here. Theater, 
hated me. If it, they probably hated us already, but yeah, no, this is where I lost it. Like there was a couple of times where I had to hold it back. This time I was like, oh fuck it, because they might as well just be along, running along to talking about my best friend. I mean, <laughs> it's it's so ridiculous. <laughs> I would have loved a montage of like romantic top of water stuff, like a tandem bike together. Yeah, right. <laughs> Trying Eating to light an ice cream cone on top of the water. <laughs> they got a bunch of shopping bags all of a sudden. And they're like, What's going on? Doing a fa- like a montage. He comes out in robes. He's like, uh-uh. He comes out all crucified. Uh-uh. Comes out as an Arabic guy. Yeah. Turns to a mermaid. Big mistake. <laughs> And then he heads back to the cabin where God's just chilling and catching some sun. Apologizes to God for getting all mad about the murder rape. He does. He's like, yeah, sorry, I got all worked up about you guys inventing murder and rape <laughs> and murder raving my daughter. Yeah. No worries, honey. It happens all the time. Like all the time. <laughs> Yeah, and his voice. And now he just went Australian for this scene. By oh, the way, it, like, they might He's as well just have like, just cast eh, Eli it. to pay, play Crocodile Dundee in the next movie. <laughs> <laughs> and then he and the Trinity head out to a field together because the wisdom scene wasn't stupid enough. He's gonna have a. God vision. He, he, well, and he's going to use God vision. Like they give him a God viewfinder so he can see the way God sees with light and color okay i think we just call that vision that's right that's what we call that light lights the visible light spectrum that's that's vision that's seeing things everybody does that you can't not see things that way yeah shitty job god i've done salvia i win yeah right yeah but to god apparently everybody looks like they were running out of cgi budget I mean, it looks like a blurry view of a light bright as seen by an ant. It's just multicolored light people. Why the fuck not? Okay. <laughs> but these are all the dead people's souls or whatever. All 106 dead people in the history of the universe. And one of the light people is walking towards him. And wouldn't you know it, it's the daddy rat poisoned to death. It's his dad. And they, they meet each other in the field and he's like, Mackenzie, and I wanted him to just beat the shit out of him and come back all covered in blood. <laughs> Guys, that was so much better than seeing my daughter. <laughs> oh. <laughs> I had to touch him. Uh, <laughs> that. <laughs> that, you have no idea how good that felt. <laughs> I'm bigger than right. him now. It's awesome. Who's hungry? <laughs> <laughs> no, but instead, he forgives his light dad, and light dad forgives him too. And yeah. now they're both light. Squaresies. I really wanted them to run into like Muslim God doing the same thing here on this light field. You're like, right. oh, did you guys have the field of dead light people now? Like, yeah, man. <laughs> we had like look on your Trello and like you know. <laughs> come on. And like the deer pops its head in. <laughs> I have a bunch of dead deer coming in at two thirty. Yeah, it's two thirty eight. <laughs> it's two twenty eight. So. Interrupting deer. <laughs> They just turn to a Muslim guy. Big mistake. (laughs) (laughs) Missy and Aisha start making friends. You got raped? Yeah, I got raped. Oh my God. This is so cool that we're white people now. (laughs) So God says, let's go home. And I says, don't tease me movie because we're not even fucking close. And then he wakes up and there's an old Indian dude standing over him. Yeah. Because <laughs> uh, you know what? I was worried this movie wouldn't get racist enough. And they were like, hey, 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 we haven't had the most stereotypical looking Native American guy in the movie yet. And I feel like Octavia Spencer's really said all the offensive black things we can have <laughs> so- an offensive black actress say. <laughs> I was very confused by the scene. Like, I, th- I was like, first, I was like, oh, is this the dad whose daughter jumped to her death? Are we yeah, going right? to address that? And then I'm thinking, like, okay, did they double book the apologetics cabin? <laughs> like what's, what's going on? Oh, you're not running, Bear. Just <laughs> talk to him. Oh, uh, you're running long, aren't you? <laughs> guys, there's a calendar. Use the Google Doc. <laughs> Dear Pops, it said, don't even fucking get me started. <laughs> so, yeah, so, but apparently, this is also God. It, uh, Octavia Spencer is a shapeshifter. And and he she says 
You know, you're going to need a father for what you have to deal with today. Lady genitals just wouldn't cut it for this. Yeah. So like, yeah, they also had to throw a little sexism in with a racism. Like, why would you why would that make sense unless God needed to p- penetrate with a penis or piss on him from a lateral distance? H- how else would God not having a vagina help in this about moment? Bone density. <laughs> oh, I see. I see. Yeah, so we can walk faster. Okay, they've got a, they've got a wrestling tournament to get to. <laughs> <laughs> uh, okay, so from here on, my note just says, "Oh God, it never ends." From from here on, for like uh, like a, a fucking The Shining level amount of times. Um, oh God! So they go to this <laughs> healing trail, which, by the way, I'm going to start calling people on a healing trail about everything. So okay, get ready for that. All right, <laughs> and they they discover the child molester. Right. And I wanted so badly for them to just beat the shit out of the child molester to all star by Smash Mouth. This is why I needed to be an Indian guy now. Missy just comes in from heaven with the elbow drop, like way out of the sky. You'd forgive this entire movie if that's how it ended. Oh, yes. <laughs> like he just wakes up in a cabin when it's over. Ah, next to like a bloody stump of a dude. <laughs> oh, the spirits really did it. That's a great ending to this movie. They don't do that, but that is the best ending. That to should, this they movie. really should have no. talked to us. <laughs> they do the opposite. Yeah. Because Native American guys are like, okay, it's time to forgive your daughter's murder rapist. He's like, I don't want to forgive the murder. He's like, you have to say it out loud. <laughs> All right. ah, I forgive the murder. You mumbled, doesn't count. You have to say it. God damn it. Forgive so, him. yeah, so he forgives the ladybug. That's what he actually forgives is a, a ladybug that represents the rapist, I guess. Um, and then they have to break into his daughter's burial chamber, I guess, because that's where the Triforce is. I, Ah, your daughter's rotting corpse. Just what we needed to help you psychologically heal. Ooh, <laughs> I missed a good part here. This is where I got up and went to the bathroom. <laughs> and I was half as I walked into the ladies' room for a second. It, it, I was half asleep. It took me way too long to realize there were no urinals. It took, like I backed back out. It was really awkward. Yeah, yeah. That's it's all right. Trump's trying to do something about that. Um. So yeah. So <laughs> as part of his healing, they now want him to pick up his daughter's corpse. Be, she might come up in pieces, so be careful. And carry it down a trail while holding it under his nose. Right. And they wrap her in a shroud. And I wrote in my notes, great. Now Missy's face is going to be on the shroud. People are going to think it's magic. <laughs> going to have to debunk it in the 90s. But assholes will still send you Google images of it. <laughs> this is where I came back in. I was hoping she'd turn into a sheep. I walked in. He's carrying her. Like all in white. It's like, bah, kick him and run away. Okay, you have to start over. So he gets down the mountain with his festering, stinking corpse, uh, um, and uh, and and then they have a new, like, second burial for her. That I guess that's what Jesus was making. It wasn't a shelf; turned out to be a daughter coffin. How long was he making that? Like, she comes in four months ago, and she was like, "J Dog, I need you to stop that table. I need to make another baby coffin. Yeah, another baby coffin. I don't like your tone. I don't like your tone. I tell you what." You want to stop making baby coffins? Maybe we stop letting kids' kids get raped. Oh, I didn't say that. I, whoa, I didn't, whoa, didn't say that. whoa. <laughs> Butterflies are ducks. Butterflies are ducks. <laughs> ducks. So, so they have their burial. And of course, they because they felt like, I guess they felt like something from the first act had to connect to something from the third act. They have Sarayu dump uh, all the tears into his grave, or into the grave of the little girl. So now oh. he's good. If they started singing Rent, this movie would be perfect. <laughs> 520 foot. Not appropriate, sorry. <laughs> I felt that moment wrong. So, and then, of course, once they get done burying her, a big <laughs> fake looking CGI tree grows out of her grave, all stupid. <laughs> it's so stupid. Because of the tears, right? Yeah, I guess. So crying is good because if you save the tears, they come in handy when you bury the corpse of your dead daughter and need quickly blooming things that's the yeah right like a butterfly tree because that's what it is right the tree opens up and butterflies start blooming out of it oh for fuck i'll save my tears if i can make a butterfly tree. (laughs) be cool so now he's drinking tea with god and jesus and the movie still isn't fucking over i wrote oh god they're gonna try and sell him a time (laughs) (laughs) that god that's so how this plays okay now it's time for the hard sell uh but actually, they kind of are, though, because this is where he has to decide whether he wants to go to heaven or go back to being alive. 
<laughs> yeah. And I, okay, apparently it was just me looking over the notes, but I was like, you should, you should stay. You should stay. Your life isn't great. You should well, stay. I mean, this is <laughs> such an easy fucking choice, right? Like, okay, we're talking about eternity in heaven. You're going to fuck up your wife for what? A couple decades at most versus eternity. This is stupid. <laughs> this is the easiest yeah. choice. Would you like to never suffer again? Um, <laughs> let me think about it. Let me think about it. Go hmm. grab some Holy Spirit, boob. Come on. <laughs> Chris Benoit walks past. Hold on, though. Hold on. You can get back here whenever you want. I'm just saying. Bring your family. Yeah. Yeah. But he decides to go home because this is a stupid movie for stupid people about stupid things. And also, God says, okay, when you get there, can you fix Kate? She's still all fucked up about the daughter rape, too. And uh, probably should have had you bring her to the cabin, honestly. But um, yeah. <laughs> oh, they also have the whole bit where they talk like the three headed knight. From uh, Holy Grail. Ugh. Yeah. So now, okay, so now we need him to wake up. Okay. So, th and this movie seems to be hedging its bets on when he was unconscious, right? This guy has gone unconscious several times in this movie. He slipped on the ice, almost got hit by the truck. He fell in the cabin or whatever. But the movie can't decide when this happened. So they make him drive home and get hit by the same semi a different time. Oh, I wanted him to like show up and like wake up in the cabin and they're like, fuck, Mac, back already? Really? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> How was your 10 minutes back in life? Ah, <laughs> got him. All right, come on. Let's go dig up some more no, shit. You, in did, your house. you did you have a choice. You will not believe what happened to your other daughter. I know. <laughs> I know. Don't take vacations is, uh, it's <laughs> one would think you would become more careful, but you know. <laughs> So, yeah, so now he wakes up in the hospital and it was all a dream and he never even made it to the shack. And Sam Worthington turns to his buddy and he's like, wow, that'd be crazy disappointing if this was a movie, huh? Would have made the whole thing pointless. Ugh, stupid. And then the family comes running in uh, and he has to tell his wife about his dream because no one else is obligated to listen. Right. By the Eli rule. <laughs> and she believes him. Uh, yeah, I guess. Yeah. Uh, the guy who wrote this movie should have to fuck us all now. That's that's how this goes. That's all this was. Absolutely. I need to fuck Sam Worthington. <laughs> I don't think he wrote it. Go fund me. I don't care. <laughs> Go fund me dot com. Don't crush my dreams. Go fund me dot com <laughs> forward slash Eli fuck Sam Worthington. So take the survey, guys. <laughs> So the daughter lurks in, like I said, the whole family comes running, but the daughter is like staying at the edges of the room like a dog that knows you're still pissed at him or something. <laughs> and, he, and he needs, and she's like, oh, I need a little alone time with Kate. And, and the family leaves and he goes, it's not your fault that your sister was murder raped. And she's like, a fucking course it isn't, dad. God, why would you even say that? I what? mean... She shouldn't have stood up on the boat. Like that's not. Well, a safe I mean, if your brother had drowned, <laughs> that would be all her. Like if the if brother you had died, the misdirection for the child. I just like the things. There are consequences for. Actually, I just I feel like the whole we're really giving out free passes here on God Awful <laughs> Movies episode eighty two, and I'm not ready. I just. If your kid died, it's kind of your fault. That's all I said. <laughs> all I've ever wanted to say. This is our final episode. It's been great. <laughs> I feel, I feel like you've been able to wrap that point in like twelve episodes in a row. Somehow, it's amazing. I don't know how you how keep doing good this. You are at that, yeah. And then, so how does he keep doing that? It's really been like twelve in a row. He's a magician. <laughs> um, and, and then the VO cuts in to wrap things up for us because we're almost done. And basically the VO was like that afternoon, Mac bore his wife with this shit for hours. And oh, by the way, this movie would be narrated by the main character if he was better at the American accent. But holy shit, guy's a goddamn idiot. Oh, God, I wish she was narrating it. <laughs> that afternoon. <laughs> wow. Wow. And I love to, okay, so now think about what actually happened here, right? Because this was like, this was, you know, based on a true story, or whatever. So this guy got hit by a truck after his daughter died and he st t starts telling his wife about this dream for hours or whatever. And, and, and I realized, oh my God, this lady told him to write a book for the exact same reason my wife told me to start a podcast. <laughs> There's an affinity here. 
Yeah. Just sitting outside a grocery store. And another thing, you know who would love to hear this? Everyone but me. <laughs> yeah, <that's> right. <laughs> I'll even do a I'll even do a part on it. Just literally just just I'll buy, buy you eggs. the microphone and everything. I swear <laughs> I, I really will. Yeah, and then we have to go down the list of all, like, his wife believed him because she's so dumb she calls God Papa. And all the people in church believed him, too, because they're self-selected for stupidity. Now, I'm sure <laughs> there's some folks would doubt this story because they're assholes. The end. Yeah, and it, there's this final shot, and I had this rather poignant moment where there's this final shot of him and his kids finally at the lake one last time, and them like, on it. And I was like, isn't it weird how, like, in Jesus People movies, they always end up, like, normal dudes on lakes and in science people movies we always like cure cancer and go to the moon <laughs> like they do know that curing cancer and going to the moon is better i don't than think being a great dad right i honestly don't think they would agree with you if you said it oh i love their they're like spinning top in this movie too right like the very end <laughs> So he goes to like step onto the water. He's like, and Mac even wonders sometimes if he can still walk in the water. And they show his foot go to the water, but then the movie ends right before, so you don't know if oh, he. I wanted so bad for him to step off the dock and just smash his head on the side and <laughs> fall through. <laughs> and his wife gets kidnapped. <laughs> <laughs> the shack too. <laughs> okay, here's what I see. Clinically depressed suicidal guy who refuses psychological help, steals a truck, wrecks it, has a drug-induced fever dream, and wakes up thinking he has magic powers. Where but religion would we be celebrating that story? Burning Man. <laughs> <laughs> okay, yeah. No, well, well done. Well done. It's more it's more yuppie now, though. A anyway, all right. So I, I feel like we can close off with an obvious question. When we get that crazy billionaire money and we do our remake of The Shack, who plays the Trinity? Oh, uh, Eddie Murphy. All three <laughs> yeah. different lady costumes. Oh, oh, oh. Um, a little person, Patrick Stewart, and Alexis Texas. <laughs> okay, all right. No, I like that one too. Both are better. And well, that's going to do it for our review of the Shack. That's not going to do it for the episode just yet because we still need to tease you for next week. So, Eli, tell us what's on deck. The becoming. Where the fuck? Did you this was emailed this? to us by Matt. It's a Christian vampire zombie action movie. And honestly, I just skipped through it and read around a little bit. It it looks pretty amazing. I'm pretty excited. <laughs> yeah, I, I, I skimmed through it just a little bit. They spent less money making this movie than I spent watching The Shack. <laughs> <laughs> I also skipped around. And every single time, I like five or six spots I skipped to, it was literally clipping. The audio was clipping every single time <laughs> oh, no. I skipped to a spot. No, oh, no. Fuck. All right. Well, with that to look forward to, we're going to bring episode 82 to a merciful close. Once again, huge thanks to all the Patreon donors to help make the show go. If you'd like to count yourself among their ranks, you can make a per episode donation at patreon.com slash godawful and thereby earn early access to every episode. You can also help us a ton by leaving us a five-star review on iTunes and by sharing the show on all your various social media platforms. And if you enjoyed this show, be sure to check out our sibling shows, The Scathing Atheist and The Skeptic Right, available on iTunes, Stitcher, and wherever else podcasts live. If you have questions, comments, or cinematic suggestions, you can email godawfulmovies at gmail.com. Legal services for this podcast are provided by the law offices of P. Andrew Torres. Our theme song was written and performed by Ryan Slotnick of Evil Drafts on Mars. All other music was written and performed by our audio engineer, Morgan Clark, with help, of course, from Eli and Anna Bosnick on the uh, podcast.study song. And if you'd like to help Eli for making you laugh out loud enough to embarrass yourself in public, remember that's podcast.study, and it takes five minutes completely anonymous. Thanks again for giving us a chunk of your life this week. For Heath Enright and Eli Bosnick, I'm No Illusions, promising to work hard for turn another chunk next week. Until then, we'll leave you with the Breakfast Club Close. Sam Worthington died while trying to do improv with an entire bag of Skittles in his mouth. <laughs> Tim McGraw eventually did win an iHeart Music Award. That polyamorous fuck cottage was very confused by the visit from that stranger. <laughs> <laughs> I want that movie. Like, he just leaves and they're like, oh, fuck, we must have got, we got out. Oh, Whew, God. Whew. All right. Everybody, odds or evens. Strap it back on. The preceding podcast was a production of Puzzle and a Thunderstorm, LLC. Copyright 2017. All rights reserved.
By now, you've probably seen 